Welcome to a new video on my channel. In this one, I'll show you how to get an A star in English literature. Before we begin, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and follow me on Instagram at Khadija Yasser, where I am now active. Also, check out my new online jewelry store, www.zuzaz.me. We have a discount on right now, which means you'll get free shipping throughout January. Another thing I wanted to mention is that I now provide literature tuitions as well as some guidance. So if you need that, you can contact me on Instagram. Putting that aside, let's get into the video. So I may have said this before, but it's important to go through the specification for any subject you're doing, specifically literature, because you need to know what's going to come in each of the papers. And it's really important to understand what you have to learn for them. So go through the specification, which is linked down below as usual. Now, for me, I had to do anthology poetry, which is what you all also have to do. And um, as well as some other texts such as Macbeth and Inspector Calls and Of Mice and Men. Now, you all have choices. It depends on which school you go to you might be doing to kill a mockingbird or romeo and juliet etc also due to covid we didn't have anthology poetry but if you're watching this video in the future you might have to do it another tip which you might not find elsewhere is annotating your textbook or your um, text such as of mice and men while you are studying or while you are having a class so this is something that me and my friends would do we would annotate our textbook as the teacher was explaining so as you can see over here this is my macbeth book which i have annotated on the side with pencil and um, basically it's whatever the teacher is explaining at the time every single thing i'm just writing it down at that moment and this helped so much because later on when i went through the book i knew what every single phrase meant and its significance also in of mice and men as you can see i put these sticky notes for important things to remember and it's much better than if you were to write on a separate piece of paper so moving on Another point that's related is annotating poems. So if you're going through an unseen poem, you must annotate it, write down what you think about the poem when you first read it, what thing stands out. And this is a great way to practice, especially if you're weak in unseen poems. And even if you look back at the poems you annotated, you can see how well you did in some and how well you did in others and even compare your annotations with online analysis. So an important question you need to ask yourself is whether you want to focus on themes of a text or characters of a text. For example, themes in Macbeth like power and ambition or characters like Lady Macbeth. The reason you can choose which thing to focus on is because each question is either a character question like this one on candy or a theme question like on the theme of power over here. So that means you can actually choose which one you need to focus on. So that means instead of focusing on both themes and characters and trying to know everything about both of these things, you can just focus on one. So what I did was a notion over here. I created pages where i had everything on each of the texts so for an inspector calls i focused on characters i did not go into themes so if you see over here i have a lot of stuff on characters lots of notes that i gathered from everything like from the internet from my teachers and from my notebooks and textbooks and so on so i had everything on characters i knew every single thing about every single character all the key quotes and you know um AO2, which is language use, the choice of language and stuff. So I had everything on characters as well as some background context, of course, and important stage directions. But other than that, I did not touch themes at all. Of course, I knew what the main themes were. It's still very important to know what the main themes are and know how they link with your characters. But you don't have to memorize key quotes about themes and stuff. You can focus on just one thing. So for an inspector calls, I chose to focus on characters. Then for Macbeth, I chose to focus on themes which is why you see that over here even though I've listed the characters there's absolutely nothing written under them whereas when you go and see themes I have even linked a page over here from BBC Bite Size and I have all the main themes written down ambition supernatural masculinity and cruelty etc etc and the list goes on so these are some of the main themes of Macbeth the main themes that I felt were the most important and the ones which our teacher kept mentioning quite a lot so I had every thing on each of these themes and I memorized most of this understood a lot of it and this is why um, I got good marks in the exam because I knew everything about themes so when there was a question on the theme I was able to write about it very effortlessly 
However, while it's important to choose which one you want to focus on, if you want to focus on themes or characters, you still need to know a lot of other things about the text, such as background context, which I've collected over here, as well as other important info, like, you know, the relationship between different characters. So even if you're doing themes, you should know things about the characters. You can't be oblivious about the characters, of course. Um, as you can see, background context is very important in Macbeth. Um, in all of Shakespeare's play, background context plays a huge role. So you need to know a lot about that as well. Don't just focus on themes and characters in a way that you ignore the other things. Now that we've looked at how you have to focus on text, let's look at poetry. So responding to unseen poems is one of the hardest things in the exam, something which I also found tricky at first, but then I watched some videos and I found out an ideal way to respond, which is to first talk about the beginning of the poem, read the poem two or three times, and then talk about the beginning of the poem and how it is significant, then talk about the title, its meaning, how it links to the question you're supposed to answer, and then you move on to talk about soap aims, which is simile, onomatopoeia, alliteration, personification, adjectives, imagery, metaphor, and sentence structure. Then you talk about structure and form. This includes things like repetition and the narrative voice and so on. And finally, you talk about the ending of the poem. If you want me to talk in more detail about how to respond to unseen poems, comment down below and I'll make a new video on it. Now we come to flashcards, my favorite way of studying. And if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know that I use flashcards all the time. So I especially use Quizlet, which is an online website for creating flashcards and studying from them. So on Quizlet, I made some online flashcards for literature, but only for Of Mice and Men. Um, and the reason I made them for Of Mice and Men myself was because I needed to memorize the quotes for Of Mice and Men since we weren't allowed to take the text into the examination hall. Of course, it turned out to be an online exam. So anyway, we weren't allowed to take the Of Mice and Men book into the exam, which meant I had to memorize the quotes. So I made these flashcards where I could easily remember all the important quotes. And flashcards are a way of learning actively instead of passively which is why they're great ways of revising and I would recommend to anyone and everyone to use flashcards when they study especially for literature. So for Of Mice and Men I made my own flashcards. Then for Macbeth and an Inspector Calls I bought these CGP flashcards from Amazon.com. You can get them as well. You can even get them for Of Mice and Men but I chose not to buy the Of Mice and Men pack and the great thing about them is that they're affordable and also they're divided into these sections so if you see over here there are some flashcards on analysis of acts this is for Macbeth and then there are some on the characters and then there are some on context and themes and if you keep going on there's on Shakespeare's techniques it's all very very useful and great for revising for your exam so if you want to ace your exam, I would really recommend getting one of these packs. So aside from these, I actually made my own handwritten flashcards on pieces of paper as well as you can see over here. Now these were on the anthology poetry section B uh, from paper one and they assess AO2 and AO3, which is why I've conveniently written that over there. And they're about like, you know, um, themes. So which poems convey the theme of relationship? So on the back, I would have the answers to this, all the poems listed down. And then likewise, I had one for family, the theme of family, violence and blood, childhood, and so on. And then I had flashcards for each individual poem. So the poem, if over here, what type of poem is it? Who's the author? And what are the main themes? And of course, the answers were at the back. So the same way I made a flashcard for each poem in the anthology but due to covid we didn't have to give it eventually so these flashcards kind of did go to waste because i didn't really revise from then and i had to focus on other parts of the exam like macbeth and all Now, usually I don't use mind maps for other subjects, but for literature, mind maps really help me a lot. I use them for each character in Inspector Calls. I made them myself using some YouTube videos and notes. And then for revision, they were absolutely amazing, helped me revise really quickly and kept all that information in my brain uh, in a photographic way because I have a photographic memory and this is really good for those who have photographic memories. And as you can see, I made some on Macbeth, such as this one on Lady Macbeth over here. I'm especially proud of this one because I could fit a lot of information into this and my exam 
uh, question actually turned out to be on Lady Macbeth, so I was really happy about that. And then, of course, I never finished this one on the three witches, which was just as well because it didn't come in the exam. So yeah, that was that. Mind maps are brilliant ways of studying as well. Planning before you start writing an answer is also a very important tip which I wanted to include in this video. When you plan your answer before starting to write it, it means that you won't forget what things you have to include in your answer and you'll also write with a more organized mind because you know that you have made a rough sketch, a rough plan at the beginning of what you want to write in the answer. So this here is my actual IGCSC exam paper, the actual answer paper which I have with me because the exams were online otherwise I wouldn't anyway my point was that I used a plan during my answers so for of mice and men I made a small plan as you can see over here in pencil and this helped quite a lot so I would really recommend that you plan out your essay before you start writing it Another important part of literature essays are quotations. You cannot have an essay without quotations. As you can see from my unseen poem answer over here, I have some short quotations in between all the explanation like too scared, hurricane, and um, quotations are important because they provide evidence for your points, for the points you're making, and they have to be short so that they don't look long-winded. So yeah, don't forget to include quotations, but don't make them long. So to make the examiners feel impressed by your answers, you need to have a good introduction, which is also called a thesis statement or a starting paragraph. Now what I did was before the exam, some months before the exams, I wrote down a ready-made starting paragraph for each of the texts. So for an inspector calls, this is the introductory paragraph that I wrote and then I memorized this, as well as for Macbeth, as you can see. So I memorized these paragraphs and of course, according to how the question would be, I would change them. Of mice and men, yeah, you can see I didn't do that. But anyway, putting that aside, um, eventually for my inspector calls answer, I did use the same paragraph as you can see over here. I used the same opening paragraph. So this is an interesting way to make sure your answer feels impressive by memorizing a pre-made introductory answer, which you can of course change according to what the question is. I can make a video on English literature without mentioning some of these amazing sites. The first one, BBC Bite Size, which I use for practically every other subject as well, but for literature it was especially useful because I was very weak in literature so I needed extra help on that. So Bite Size was amazing for helping me, you know, understand literature and how it works and stuff. Things like form, structure and language, sample exam questions with answers as well, which really helped me understand how you're supposed to go about answering a question and loads of other resources, which I'm sure you guys will find useful as well. Then there was Spark Notes, which is very popular. I'm sure you must have heard of it before. Spark Notes is the go-to literature website. You can find great resources on Shakespeare plays like Macbeth, um, No Fear Shakespeare, study guides teaching guides graphic novels and 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 memes yeah I don't know how that's useful but they're memes and so the no fear Shakespeare part is actually the main thing I wanted to show the no fear translation is the main thing that you will benefit from on the spark notes website which is basically a translation of Shakespeare's English into modern English yeah amazing I know so you can go through that and basically understand what Shakespeare is actually trying to say. Then there's Lit Charts, which is by the same Sparknotes people actually, and it just has extra stuff that you can benefit from. So you should check out Lit Charts as well. All these links are down below, by the way, in the description. Okay, so the next great website is Seneca Learning, which I actually just found a month before my exams. And the great thing about this website is that it's in a course structure, so you go through the text and then you give quizzes and stuff and this really propels you to keep on studying and there's lots of great stuff on context and authors and it's really useful for English literature as well as some other subjects but of course the main focus over here for now is literature so I really enjoyed using Seneca Learning it's a new way of studying rather than just reading there are some quizzes and um, you know fill in the blank sort of things which help you to you know, remember content more. So I would recommend you check out Seneca Learning as well. It's absolutely free, but 
you need to upgrade if you need some extra features and stuff so yeah check out Seneca Learning these are the main websites that I found the most useful and I hope you find them useful as well these are especially good for those who want to change their study methods frequently as always I have to mention some YouTube channels so first up Mr. Sells this channel helped me the most for English and English literature. Mr. Sells teaches English. He has videos on every single thing you would ever want to know about English literature. And usually I don't promote other channels, but really this channel is amazing. And I think my good marks are attributed towards this channel. There's everything on Inspector Calls, Macbeth. He even has his own guides on Amazon which you can purchase as well. So this is a really great channel, really good teacher. Okay, so the next channel I want to talk about is Mr. Bruff. Mr. Bruff, I mostly only watched for English literature, not English, and he is another great teacher who has these animated sort of videos as well on Inspector Calls and Macbeth, which I found really useful, and I use some of these for my mind maps also. So Mr. Bruff is another great channel to check out. So lastly, I wanted to mention Dr. Aiden, who's another great literature teacher um, and he's focused mostly on Shakespeare so I used his videos for Macbeth. He has animated sort of videos as well but they're really really useful so I would recommend him. Okay, so a few small tips before we end the video. Whenever you practice for your exam, please put a timer or a stopwatch, which will help you analyze how much time you're taking, how much time you need to cut down on. Also use different words like suggests, connotes, implies, while you're writing your answer to show that you have a wide vocabulary. Here are some examples of some words that you can use. So those are some small tips and that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful.